back for another conversation about artists looking at art, and pretty contemporary art in this case. This week we met with Charles Gaines, artist, writer, musician, really good tennis player, and faculty in the School of Art at CalArts. You can find out more about Charles at the end of this video. Now let's join him in his studio to discuss the work that he chose, an installation piece entitled From Asterisks in Dockery, done by CalArts alumnus Rodney McMillian for the exhibition Blues for Smoke at the Los Angeles Museum of Contemporary Art in 2012. You're the first artist that we've talked to who's chosen such a recent work, um, and an artist by, uh, and a work by an artist that actually um, is um, of a generation younger than them, rather than of many generations older, or, or perhaps lost, you know, um, um, to history. So I, th I thought that was just a really interesting choice on your part, and and wanted to hear a little bit more about um, why you chose the work, and then and and then um, how the work sort of exists in the world. I was thinking, I think mostly, about. Uh, having the opportunity to, to talk about the relationship between art and politics. And mm -hmm. That's why I was, I, was, I was running through my mind about uh, running over the names of several contemporary artists that I know. And, uh, so, and I finally wound up with Rodney. Uh, but all of those people I was thinking about uh, oh, dealt with work that, uh, that where politics played a, some significant role mm -hmm. in one way or another. Mm -hmm. And there is a, a, a much more opportunity to do that in work since 1980. You know. And the second thing, of course, is uh, you know, work that is not like mine, but as I, as the way I put it is that if I wasn't doing the work I, I am doing, that's the kind of work I would have liked to be doing, I would like to have been doing. You know. yeah. Trying to, f to f find or select a person it fits that kind of category. And Rodney is perfect because uh, his work just amazes me. And, uh, and I know I said that, you know, like, I wish I could make work like, like that, but I don't, I don't have the temperament to, but I wish, because right. it's just miraculous, I think, the way, what, what he does. And it's interesting to me because, our, except for our mutual interest in political content, uh, uh, he's an entirely different artist from my, from yeah. My, yeah, he's messier for one thing. <laughs> <laughs> but also I think it's worth saying that it, it's not that all art at some level, it, all art is politics at some level, all art, you know, sort of fulfills ideological, does ideological work in, in, in the world, but there are certain moments where that work um, can be externalized. And certainly from about the 1980s on, when the language of modernism was sort of taken up for interrogation and the politics of it were insisted upon um, in various ways was one of, the, was one of those moments. Um, so tell us a little bit about um, From Asterisk to Dockery. It's a church that, uh, that he creates as, 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 as for a commission for, uh, for a show at, uh, that Bennis Simpson curated at Mocha called right. Um, blues for Smoke. The church is uh, completely, uh, at least the interior structure of, of the church is con cons completely constructed of vinyl, red vinyl, and, and uh, along with a fuse and pulpit and and, uh, and, and, and it's particularly um, framed around the, the Southern Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what you might find in, in, a, in a small Southern Baptist church. You know, vinyls is a material that Rodney's been using for a while, and um, and uh, if if you saw some of his earlier work, it, the sexual implications of vinyl, he sometimes directly uh, employs, uh, or and sometimes not. But you know, uh, but these these large vinyl constructions, early ones were wall constructions. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was interested in. in, in this major switch from black vinyl to red vinyl, yeah. and uh, and also you know carrying with with it that content within the context of the of the of, of the church. Vinyl is a very provocative material. So so when you walk into a space environment that where it exists environmentally, not only the the, the does does a uh, 
the this, this, this sensible nature of the material comes across to you. But also flooding at the same rate as it's, it's the, the political and social and the cultural context of the material, right. you know, what it's been, all the things that it's been used from, mm -hmm. you know, uh, making couches to uh, sadomasochism, right. for that matter, yeah. So you notice how my eyebrows went up when I say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so all of that comes flooding out, and, right. and it successfully uh, engages that sort of problematic issue of, of the relationship in, in art, particularly art that deals with uh, uh, social and cultural ideas, the relationship between the sensible and the affective aspects of artistic production and, and this discursive uh, and intellectual aspect. Right. You know, having those two things uh, function together. So in a way, it, it insists on being what it is at the same time that it's something else in a way that when, um, when Michelangelo's marble um, and when we see it as skin or as w when we look in a great 17th century painting and we don't see the paint but we see the world through a process of mimesis, it, it's a sort of transparency actually that's doing a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, ideological work, a lot of, uh, of persuading that art can be. Um, this space of kind of autonomous miracles, if you will. And, and it seems to me that, that when you go into Rodney's church, you are in a church, but you are in a cobbled together space of vinyl at the same time. And you're not asked to sort of look through it and pretend it's not there, but actually to sort of cope with it and begin to sort of, I don't know, unpack the chain of all the associations that those materials bring and those symbols bring. Well, in I mean, it's interesting because, the, you know, and this is, I think this is a, an interesting fact about, uh, you know, you know, the content from a cultural perspective, because what well, you do bring the fact as a culture, a shared experience with mm -hmm, respect to right. these materials. So, right. so it, it's not like a, a, a sort of a open, Open field of interpretation. Exactly. Yeah. Although it, it it is interpretive, it is an interpretive experience. Mm -hmm. the, the politics, of course, is is has to do with how, it, in what ways, churches uh, help form uh, uh, cultural value, and and uh, and also how churches, what 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 goes in to. Uh, into building and strengthening communities, how churches uh, do that. And one of the provocative implications of that piece is uh, uh, fear and authority is, is one of the, is a, is a very major discourse or strategy for cultural co cohesion. Mm -hmm. You know, which, you know, cultural cohesion is a good thing. You know, authority may or may not be a good thing, but it, it's provocatively political. We need to talk about a little bit about what Dockery is, right? Um, in terms of the titling of this work and how it's situated in this exhibition, because I don't, I don't think we can assume that um, everybody knows. So, do you want to tell a little bit about um, where where Rodney McMillan's church is sitting, actually, according to his title? My general uh, knowledge of is, is, is that that site is simply emblematic of. Uh, a southern site, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, how sites like that uh, was, was part of the the uh, the, 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 the slave the, history, the narrative of the history of slavery. Right. And and um, so that we were talk, I was talking before about you know the the church in, in a way you know the sort of the ameliorative power of the church. Right. Uh, was, was, was to sort of uh, create narratives and create uh, strategies in order to uh, accommodate and ad adapt to what was essentially, you know, in a, 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 a period, uh, an extraordinarily inhuman uh, type of existence. And, uh, and so that we're, that we're sort of coming out of the legacy of slavery that uh, 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 where effects of that, of that moment uh, continue. Mm 
Because yeah. in fact it's a plantation but where it's a sharecropping plantation. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a post emancipation reinscription of the economic conditions of slavery in, in new form. Mm -hmm. um, and and it is now also then sort of recognized and celebrated as the site of the birthplace of the blues, um, where a lot of, 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 of blues musicians from the twenties and thirties sort of emanated. The sense it was a commissioned piece. Mm -hmm, right. Uh, that was uh, how he linked the uh, the idea of the, of the blues itself to this tradition that we were just talking about. There are these moments throughout the 20th century where people who aren't, um, who don't necessarily experience themselves as um, authorized by modernism with a capital M take up modernist language to see if it will work for them. I mean, it happens in Harlem, it happens in Mexico with the, with the Mexican muralist movement where you can sort of feel people that aren't in that dominant narrative sort of saying, can this language do work to represent my experience? That's interesting because, I mean, what, what, what happens in those instances and I'm thinking of, of course, uh, sort of black artists and from the Harlem Renaissance on and, and also the Mexican muralists and, and uh, almost all of Latin American art. Right, exactly. Uh, uh, that uh, as, as if they, they stand outside the modernist paradigm, that they had no conception of you know, art practice except for the modernist paradigm. Like, for example, uh, uh, the uh, the painters like uh, in New York, uh, like Ernest Critchlow and Norman Lewis, mm -hmm. uh, abstract pa abstract painters, and Romare Bearden, uh, uh, you know, f uh, found uh, that that uh, this gap between uh, what was held happening to them in the world, right. and what the, 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 what the, the practice was. Now, what uh, what I think isn't talked about enough is not that they were re trying to rewrite or reinvent modernism because they were wholehearted believers in the modernist principle. Exactly. But what, what it is written about is the struggle uh, uh, they had with the idea that th there was no w way of accessing their experiences through strategies of art making that they absolutely loved. Mm -hmm. Went, went on is that this is the only way that they could sort of deal with this gap is, is to try to ask for exclu inclusion right. into the paradigm. Yeah. So, so the, 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 the paradigm yeah. was, 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 extraordinar was extraordinarily ubiquitous, you know. And, uh, uh, and that struggle, I think, is something that's not really not talked about. Uh, uh, talked about.